I really want to get into that shed and find out what's in it. And I know you want to find out too. But I've already started clearing small amounts and I'm getting overwhelmed with waste material. So I've got to do things in the right order. So before I get into there and clear all of this, I've got to build a compost bin. I've been collecting pallets now for some time, so I've got quite a nice selection saved up, ready for a rainy day. And I think this is the perfect occasion to actually use some of these things. I've got all shapes and sizes, including a really long one, which my plasterboard for my workshop came in, and a number of just silly small ones, but mainly the European pallet size. That's 800 by 1200, as these are the biggest ones that I can fit in the car. I've decided to repurpose this small stable to make into a compost area because it's away from the house and at some point I'm also planning to put a roof on it so it doesn't get too wet. So this frame that's already been built is an ideal structure and it means I just don't have to start from zero. It's unusual for me to start without a specific plan in place, but this is just a compost bin, so it's not a complex build. And if it's not 100% perfect, it really doesn't matter. I start by thinking that my long 2.4 meter pallet will come useful at the back here. And although it fits and it actually sits on these timbers quite nicely, it's so open, there's not really much timber there and it will take me so much time to clad it and fully enclose it that I'm actually better off just using standard pallets. So because I've already got these timbers in place on the ground, I can actually put a pallet on its side. And that means, although it's only 800 wide, the final height comes out to be more like 1.2 meters, which is what I'm looking for. I do a little bit of maintenance on these timbers that used to be at the bottom of the stable and also screw on another 100 by 100 timber that was left in the area which will help secure the pallet at the bottom. fill as many gaps at the bottom as I can because there's obviously a chance that rodents will like to make a home in the nice warm compost bin. With the base firmly in place, I can put two of my pallets on their side on top of it. So I've got the height I want here with the pallets on their side rather than vertical. 
These are just fixed together on the back and suddenly the whole structure becomes a little bit more stable. My plan here was to predominantly use nails, but when you're trying to fix timbers together, quite often you want them to pull together, which only a screw can do. Nails are okay if timbers are already in contact, but if you want to try to pull them together to make them tighter, nails just aren't going to do that. On the side, the frame is a lot thinner, so I've knocked the back off of a couple of pallets, just keeping the top face, which is all I need because I can use another piece of timber going from post to post to give the top of the pallet some strength. Once again, I do my best to block the bottom just with another horizontal piece of timber. The front of the bin, I want to be able to take out at a later date so I can get to the material and turn it. And for this, I'm intending to use another pallet with the bottom knocked off. And without adding any additions to either side, that means with the pallets I've got, the widest I can make it is 1.2 meters. And I really want it a little bit wider than that. So I found another post with some planks of timber that I can put onto the side. That will let me put the front face on the inside of that and allow the bin just to be maybe another 100 millimetres wider on either side. For the left hand wall, the ground is sloping up towards the back. So I dig a little bit of a trench so the pallets can sit level and I can connect them securely to the back wall, giving them some sort of strength. With a little bit more digging, I can get two pallets in with a slight step between them, which is absolutely fine, and then connect them together. I make sure the front is the width that I want it to be and put the similar post on the left hand side as I did on the right. However, this one doesn't have any boards attached to it. So I mark out the halfway point on the right hand side so I can cut the boards and use half of them for the left. I can then screw these onto the left hand post, making a return that the front wall can bear against. The reason I made this bin the size I did is not just to contain the material that I know I'm going to produce, but a bigger bin actually produces more heat, which actually accelerates the decomposition process. So as long as I can find enough material to fill this bin, the whole composting process will be faster and more successful. There's the bin complete, and size-wise, it ended up around about 1.6 by just under 1.5, which is a fair size compost bin. But I think I'm gonna need it that size once I cut down all the brambles and I've also got grass cuttings, I've got everything else I need to do to clear this land. And I've also got the opportunity to put in some additional straw and manure and everything else from the landowner next door as well. 
Is it square? No. Is it level? No. Was it fun making out of old timber? It really was actually, it's something different and it's really just there to serve a purpose and it doesn't need to be a masterpiece or a work of art. So that's absolutely fine, but I think we'd better start filling it up. For this bin, I'm aiming at 50% green and 50% brown waste. And during the spring months, I'm aware that I'm gonna get a lot more green than brown. So I'm lucky to have permission from the landowner next door to use some of the straw and the manure in the stables from when the horses used to be in the field. This is gonna be a good source of brown, drier material that I'm hoping that will complement my grass cuttings that will inevitably come over the next few weeks and months. Having said that, it's not necessarily the most pleasant of jobs. So I've just come back from Makers Central, where I was rubbing shoulders with Jimmy DeResta and April Wilkinson. And they keep saying, God, jeez, that being a YouTuber is glamorous. The fame and the glamour. Damn, eh? And the smell. Hey. My plan here is once I've got a bit of material in the bin, I'm gonna line the sides with cardboard just to stop material coming out and just insulate the bin a little bit better. But I wanna get some material in first, which will hold the cardboard in place. The material I've put in so far is so dry, it needs some moisture to start that whole decomposition process. Although I do have a bit of a challenge with the length of my two hoses. So the one thing I have learnt is that my two hoses added together are not long enough to reach the far corner of my new plot. So it looks like I'm going to have to buy another hose and when I do that the pressure losses are probably going to be so big it's only going to come out in a bit of a dribble. But it would be handy to have a hose all the way here just to do exactly this. If it's too dry I'm going to have to give it a little bit of water to aid the whole process. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please check out the other ones on the channel and please subscribe. And please go and check out our Patreon page where there's additional content and additional weekly videos as well. So, compost bin is made, compost has started. All I have to do now is wait about eight months. Hmm.